Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and our FCS Dynasty. Today we're taking a look at the nation. We're doing our week 12 recap and our week 13 predictions. Let's get right into it. Sports Illustrated cover, a bad moon rising. Gator Jr. is determined to prove that the Tigers belong in the top 10. Well, they absolutely do after that crazy win over New Hampshire. They have two more games left there in the ACC. One against South Carolina State, who will be ranked in that game. And one against Norfolk State. Let's take a look at the rest of the Sports Illustrated. Bowl rankings. Championship run. The latest bowl rankings have Savannah State playing for the national title. Of course they do. They're number two in the country. They've blown out most of their opponents, other than New Hampshire. Fresno State remains number one. They'll be taking on the San Diego Toreros in week 13. Riley, 28 touchdowns, four picks on the season. That is, I don't know if San Diego has a chance at all in that game. But Savannah State, they take on New Han or they take on South Carolina State, excuse me, who is ranked 23rd in the country. Rice is third in the bowl ranking. Central Michigan, Ball State, Wyoming, uh, New Mexico State, UTEP, and Bryant still getting disrespected. They're ranked seventh nationally and ninth in the bowl rankings. William and Mary is 13th. Dayton up there in 14th. And Navy rounds out the bowl rankings. Let's check out the top 25 polls. Still on top, number one, Fresno State gets all they can handle from the Broncos. They won't 28 game. Savannah State, of course, won. They are 10 and 0. Fresno State is 9 and 0. Rice in Central Michigan and Wyoming rounds out the top five. Bryant is still receiving two first place votes. They are ranked seventh in the country, 10 and 0 on the year. Nothing really has changed so far for the top 10 in the past couple weeks. William & Mary, Akron, and Ohio, they all stay in the same spots, basically. Navy, Dayton, 15th, and South Dakota State jumps up to 16th, so very nice for them. So we have three teams in the top 15, four in the top 20. Montana, James Madison is up there ranked. They just beat Tennessee State. Huge win over the Tigers, who were ranked. Idaho, Nevada, Tulane, UNLV, South Carolina State 23rd now. And Tennessee State actually only dropped one spot after that loss to the Dukes. Colorado State, they drop 11 spots after they lost to San Diego State 23-14. to So you got to expect that their two players that are on the Heisman watch list will probably get out of there after that loss. Sam Houston State receiving votes. Buffalo, Eastern Michigan, San Diego. San Diego State, Towson, Cal Poly, Hawaii, and UC Davis receiving some votes for the top 25 as well. So that is it for the top 25. Let's check out the Heisman watch list. We know MJ Gator Jr. and Brandon Allen are on there. The Cowboys are winning and Atkins play at quarterback is the main reason. Okay, so Wyoming gets the cover even though we have three players on here. Atkins and Holly from Wyoming are on there. MJ Gator Jr., Brandon Allen, and Lamar Jackson. Nobody moved except for Atkins overtook Holly for the number three spot. Brandon Allen last game had four touchdowns. Beaston and Feaston. Jordan Atkins threw for almost 500 yards against Eastern Carolina. And Holly did not do a game. That's why he took over that number three spot. And Lamar Jackson had four touchdown passes against North Dakota State to keep his fifth spot on the Heisman watch list. Over 2,700 passing yards for him. He is such a great talent. Let's check out the awards semi or awards finalists, actually. So the top three players, it'll eventually be them winning it. MJ Gator Jr., Brandon Allen, and Raul Lozano III are the top three for the Maxwell. Daily Redding and Lamar Jackson miss out for the Jackrabbits. And we'll take a look at the rest of the top 12 as well. These are the final top 12 for the season. Alexander Connor in there at 7th. The Bednarik, Rob Orlandi is number 1 currently. Tony Penn is number 2. And Stephen Baker, the non-subscriber linebacker for the Savannah State Tigers, is 3rd. Chris Major and Ralph William miss out, as well as Darius Peters and Zane Williams. Best quarterback, Lamar Jackson, Miner, and Alexander Connor. So two of our guys still have a shot. Owen Black is 5th, which is very shocking. If you take a look at his stats, he has a lot of rushing touchdowns. I believe he has 20 on the season. But Alexander Connor and Lamar Jackson, they totally deserve that award. For the Walker Award, MJ Gator Jr., Brandon Allen, and Daly Redding. It's going to be between Gator 
and Allen, I think it's fantastic. 22 touchdowns on the year, but I don't think he has enough touchdowns to compete with the other two. Best wide receiver, Holly, Jude, and Taylor. And we actually have an FCS player on there, which is very nice to see. Prayer View A&M receiver. And, of course, we have none of our guys on there. Best tight end. We're not going to win it this year. But we do have a lot of talent at the tight end position. So next year, I expect one of our guys to at least make it at the top three. Jim Mitchell is probably going to win. He's got 11 touchdowns on 35 catches. The redshirt senior out of Florida Atlantic. And he also has 13 rushes as well. And 596 yards receiving. Hill for Murray State is there as well. Redshirt junior. And Horn for the Delaware Blue Hens senior tight end. Best offensive lineman, Dan Williamson, is number one. Kenneth Harrington, two. And Adam Miller for Western Carolina is third. So we have three FCS linemen up for that award. Dan Williamson, 89 pancakes, one sack allowed. Kenneth Harrington, over 70 pancakes. Just phenomenal talent on the O-line. For the Remington Center, Gray North is there. And Latimer, the senior non-subscriber center for Savannah State, is there as well. I'd really like to see Gray North win it, but I don't know if he's got enough pancakes to secure that award. Lombardi. Christian Dan deserves it. 15 sacks on the year, but the other two guys are well-deserving as well. And, of course, all three are FCS talent. As you can see, the top six are all FCS players. Not a single FBS uh, defensive front seven player is on this list. Best linebacker, Tony Penn, 10 sacks, over 115 tackles, 33 tackles for loss, 5 forced fumbles. He is most likely going to win it with the injury to Rob Orlandi. I don't think Stephen Baker has enough to overtake Penn for that award. A lot of FCS talent on that list as well. The Thorpe Award, Chris Major will most likely win that. Matt Dunlap playing great. Ralph William, he is injured for 6 weeks, so it's between Chris, Chris Major and Matt Dunlap. Major with 5 interceptions, 7 forced fumbles, 87 tackles, 5 for a loss. Dunlap, 97 tackles, 9 for a loss, 2 sacks, 3 picks, 4 forced fumbles. So he's doing a little bit of everything. We might see if we can get Chris Major a sack or two before the season's over. Nick Leonard will probably win this award. Best kicker, the Grozo Award. He's 16 of 17. Tom Dixon is right behind him, though, with 2 misses, as well as Perry Hardy, who also has 2 misses. Best punter. Dustin Robinson out of Towson. And Andy Gates and Darren Harris. Best return man, Jamar Hicks, should win this in a landslide. It's not even going to be close. I think he has seven total returns for touchdowns on special teams. Of course, Zoomer Speed does have four kick returns for scores as well. Mr. Highlight just misses out on the top three. So Hicks, Mitchell, and Speed. Best coach, South Carolina State, Jim Langer. And Seth Maddox makes it to the top three. So he's got a shot. Scott Goldberg, shockingly, does not make the top three. He is fourth. That's it for award finalists. Let's check out the bowl projections. First of the season, guys. The bowl picture, the Chippewas, 9-1, are looking at a potential GMAC bowl bid. Now, hopefully our teams get some big bowl bids. They're all in big conferences. So I'm really hoping that's the case. I know Dayton is headed to uh, one of the big bowl games since they have won the Big Ten. New Orleans Bowl, Towson and FIU, Champs Sports Bowl. Oh my goodness, Southeast Missouri State is 3-7 and seven and they're projected to go to a bowl game. Hopefully at the end of the regular season and conference championship that that actually changes because that is insane. UNLV back in the rankings 5-5 five and five on the year. After starting out 0-5 oh this season, that'd be a great bowl game between two of the best schools. Jacksonville State versus Tennessee Tech. That would also be a good bowl game. Both schools 5-5 five and five on the season. Northern Colorado projected to have a rematch with Colorado State. I don't know if I want to see that because <laughs> it might have the same result. But either way, if the Bears can get a bowl game, I'll be happy. That's the Las Vegas Bowl, which is projected for December 23rd. So that will be the first bowl week out of the three bowl weeks, I believe. And Northern Colorado is fifth in the Pac-10 currently. Colorado State 8-3 on the year number two in the Mountain West. The Hawaii Bowl, no shock. Hawaii's in that versus Tulane. That'd be a, good, a great game as well. NPC Computers Bowl, New Mexico State versus Florida A&M. 
That'd be interesting with that number one passing attack for the Rattlers. Motor City Bowl, another 3-7 and seven school. I'm really hoping that it corrects itself right there. Montana State, State and Ball State would destroy them by 50. At least. That's being very generous. Alabama A&M versus Nichols State in the Independence Bowl. That would also be a good game. Alabama A&M has a really good defense. The Insight Bowl, Harvard at Portland State. I think Portland State would win that one easily. Their offense has been performing very nicely. North Dakota State versus Western Illinois in the Alamo Bowl. Another Big 12 versus Big 10 showdown. Norfolk State versus Yale in the Meineke Car Care Bowl. Arkansas Pine Bluff, another 3-7 and seven school versus Sam Houston State. The Bearcats win that one easily as well. The Emerald Bowl, Wyoming versus Southern Utah. The Thunderbirds still need one more victory to become bowl eligible. So hopefully they get it. Hopefully they don't have to face Wyoming. That would not be a pretty game. San Diego at Furman in the Holiday Bowl. That is an interesting matchup. Furman actually has a couple nice wins on the season. They're 6-4 and four as well as the Toreros. Elkhorn State versus Youngstown State. I think Elkhorn State would win that one with their speedy receivers. The Sun Bowl, UC Davis versus Southern Illinois Salukis. So a lot of good bowl projections for our teams. New Mexico versus UTEP. Okay, that'd be a really good game. Two of the best schools. Grand Lake State and William & Mary. I think William & Mary would win that one. Our first January bowl game, the Southern Jaguars and the Indiana State Sycamores in the Outback Bowl. Cotton Bowl, Jackson State at VMI. I would love to see the cadets in that game. The Gator Bowl, Dartmouth at Bryant. Oh my goodness, Dartmouth would get demolished in this game, probably by 70. Capital One Bowl, Jacksonville and Montana. That's a good matchup. I think Jacksonville matches up nicely with Montana. They have a lot of firepower on offense, and Montana's a very well-rounded team. I think that would be a really good game. Cal Poly at Tennessee State is currently the Sugar Bowl matchup. Pac-10 leader versus the SEC leader. And the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, Dayton versus South Dakota State. So whoever wins the Big 12 is going to end up taking on Dayton in the Fiesta Bowl. So it's most likely it's going to be South Dakota State or VMI. The Orange Bowl, Rice versus Princeton. Rice with that quarterback, Howell. Oh my goodness. And the national championship game projection right now, Savannah State taking on Fresno State. Number two versus number one in the Rose Bowl. That would be fantastic if that happened. If you got one of our schools make it to the championship game in our first season. But Fresno State, they have a lot of talent on that school. So I don't know. I don't know if Savannah State matches up well with them. That'd be a really tough game with a B defense versus a C offense. The only thing they got going for them is Savannah State's defense is a little higher overall, but they have been struggling lately. Let's get ready and get into the players of the week. Defensive player of the week. I'll go to Navy's Woods. Stepping it up. Owen Black, player of the game on offense, or player of the week on offense, excuse me. 370 passing yards, 12 of 13. He had 180 yards rushing, six total touchdowns. Marcus Pedersen, Defensive Player of the Week, six tackles, three for a loss, one sack, two picks, two pick sixes, and that 73 to 14 win over Alabama AM in an SEC matchup. CMJ Gator Jr., Offensive Player of the Week for them, and Cody Lee Jr., Defensive Player of the Week. Both were outstanding in their win over New Hampshire. Smash Jackson, Offensive Player of the Week, 10, four touchdowns on the ground. Nate Thompson for Illinois State, 16 tackles, 6 tackles for loss, 3 sacks, interception, and 2 forced fumbles, and a loss to Youngstown State. Justin Hopps, Offensive Player of the Week for the Big 12, 162 passing yards, 156 rushing, 5 total touchdowns. Jonathan McClellan, Jr., left end, had 8 tackles, 4 tackles for loss, 2 sacks, 2 forced fumbles, 2 fumbles recovered for Tennessee Tech on the defensive side of the football. On to the Big East, Theo Williams, senior halfback, 144 yards, two scores, 37 receiving yards, and a win over Columbia. Keon Henry, 11 tackles, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery in a 31-28 overtime victory over the Brown Bears. For the Yale Bulldogs, who are 6-4 on the season, they look like they will win the uh, Big East or the Ivy League, whichever way you want to see it. That's it for the Big East. Let's go ahead and take a look. At the Conference USA, Allen Williams, redshirt junior halfback for Rice, 139 yards, three scores. 
AJ Westerman for James Madison Dukes, a junior outside linebacker, had nine tackles, five for loss, two sacks, and an interception in that upset win over Tennessee State 35-30. Huge win for the Dukes. They're now ranked 18th in the country, 6-3 on the year. That's a good win for North Dakota State, who beat them. Micah Turner, senior quarterback for Navy, player of the week on offense for the Independence. 80 yards passing, 122 rushing, two touchdowns. And on defense, three tackles and a touchdown. Adam Russ, eight receptions, 152 yards, three touchdowns for Buffalo for the Mac. Dwayne Smith for New Hampshire, two tackles, three picks, and a pick six in that loss to the State Tigers. Mountain West, senior halfback Ben Thomas for the UNLV Rebels, 160 yards, four touchdowns, 43 receiving yards. Josh Hodge, six tackles, four tackles for loss, two sacks, interception, forced fumble for the New Mexico Lobos, redshirt outside linebacker, redshirt sophomore outside linebacker. All in black, of course, player of the week for the Pac-10 on offense. Paxton Erdley gets his first player of the week honor for defense. Five tackles, two for loss, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery against the Southern Utah Thunderbirds. Nice game for the freshman defensive tackle. Michael Hines, player of the week on offense for the SEC. 173 passing yards, four of six. He had 92 rushing yards, and he had an 80-yard touchdown reception. Three total scores for him. Marcus Pedersen, of course, player of the week for the SEC on defense. Sunbelt, Zach Vogel, 11 catches, 241 yards and three touchdowns against Georgia Southern, and they won that game. Derek Watson for Sanford and went over App State at 11 tackles, three for a loss, sack, forced fumble, and a fumble recovery, and a 49-24 victory. Sanford, 6-4 on the season, and in pretty good spot there in the Sun Belt. Now, with Georgia Southern's loss, I don't think they have a shot at winning the Sun Belt anymore, so it's going to be FIU or FAU. Out of the whack. Richard Jr. halfback Blake Hayden for Fresno State on 133 yards and two touchdowns receiving and 90 yards rushing. Derek Slater, six tackles, interception, and a forced fumble in the Bulldogs' overtime victory over Boise State. Conference standing. Central Michigan inches past the Broncos in a rivalry game. Taking a look here at the ACC, Bryant and Savannah State, of course, at the top of that conference. South Carolina State fourth, William & Mary is third. Now, Bryant is headed to the ACC Championship game. They have finished their conference play 8-0. Savannah State has two more games left, one against South Carolina State this week, week 13, and the last game of the year against Norfolk State. Now, if they lose to South Carolina State and then they, uh, the Bulldogs win out in the conference, South Carolina State will win the Coastal Division and take on Bryant in the ACC Championship game. So let's hope for a Savannah State victory this coming week. Dayton, of course, they won the Big Ten. They're going to the Fiesta Bowl. And that was actually, there's actually a couple of pretty good schools in there. You got Montana and Dayton. Some schools are fighting for some bids. On to the Big 12, South Dakota State will probably be taking on VMI. I, yep, South Dakota State clinched the North with their win over North Dakota State. They are 8-3 on the year, 6-1 in conference. So the Big 12 championship game will be South Dakota State taking on the VMI Cadets. Furman just misses out at 4-3 on the year, but they're still going to get a bowl game. Nicholas State is probably going to get a bowl game, as well as Sam Houston State. So five out of the six schools in the Big 12 North will most likely receive a bowl bid, and maybe only two out of the Big 12 South. So VMI 6-1 in the conference. Southeast Missouri State 3-7 on the year. Not very good. But they are number two in that division. The Big East can still be won by anybody. Princeton, Dartmouth, Harvard, Yale. I think all those schools are going to, one of them is going to win it. The rest of the schools, not so much. Columbia and Penn, or Columbia and Brown, excuse me, still have a chance, an outside chance, but I don't think that's going to happen. Cornell and Penn, both two and seven on the season. Conference USA. James Madison, 5-1 in conference. Jacksonville State, 4-2. Now, this team is loaded in the West with FBS schools. So, it's very impressive that uh, these teams are actually doing quite well in the conference. Rice and UTEP, both 8-1 on the year. Rice still, oh, well, UTEP can still win it. Tulane can still win the West as well, depending on if they lost to Rice in the year. James Madison, of course, number one in the other division. Take a look at the Independence. Navy 7-2, Army 7-3, Northeastern and Wofford both with only one victory each. Out of the MAC. Can still be won by the top three schools, Ohio, Akron, and Buffalo. Maine is out of the picture. New Hampshire 
also out of the picture, but they can still get a bowl game. In the West, Central Michigan is the next opponent for Ball State. So number six will be taking on number four, and that game will decide who's going to go to the MAC championship game. So I'm really looking forward to that matchup. Two of the best schools in the country. Out of the Mountain West, New Mexico. They should win this conference, and actually they will win the conference, even if they lose another one. I think they already beat Colorado State this year. Uh, UNLV takes on Colorado State next week, looking for their sixth win in a row. So another good game right there. San Diego State's going to get a bowl game. UNLV Air Force out of the wacky Pac-10. Northern Colorado no longer in contention. The Pac-10 winner will be Cal Poly or San Diego. Both teams have one conference game apiece left. And it won't be this week. I think it's week 14 for both schools. So they both have non-conference games. San Diego takes on, um, my goodness, I can't even remember. Fresno State, thank you very much. My goodness gracious. And Cal Poly takes on Columbia, I believe. So Southern Utah can still get a bowl game. Northern Colorado can still get one. But the other three have clinched bowl berths, and so has Jacksonville. So Tennessee State, they have won the SEC East, and they will be taking on the Jacksonville Dolphins in the SEC Championship game. The Dolphins, I believe they play Alabama State this week. So that'll be a fun game as well. Another conference matchup for them. The Sun Belt. FIU still in the lead for that. Georgia Southern just lost to Texas State. That's another conference loss for them on the year. They're not 4-2. Tied with Florida Atlantic and Samford. And all these teams still have two conference games left. So really, Georgia Southern, Florida Atlantic, and Sanford could still win this. Because FIU just lost to Tennessee Martin. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe that. Sanford, they just beat App State. So Tennessee Martin now 5-5 five and five with a shot at making a bowl game. On to the whack. Fresno State. Two more conference games left. New Mexico State with two as well. So it's going to be between Fresno State and New Mexico State in the WAC. Even if San Diego shocks the world and beats the Bulldogs, they could still win the WAC easily because that's not going to be a conference loss for them. San Jose State 2-7 this year. Very bad year for them. And that is it, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Week 12 recap. Game number one. NAU, Northern Arizona, traveled to UC Davis. I predicted that the Aggies would win, and they did, 63-38. Game 2, San Diego Toreros traveled to take on the Idaho State Bengals. I predicted the Toreros would win, and they did, 38-34. Very closely contested game. Game 3, VMI at Southeastern, and I picked VMI. They shut them out, 49 to nothing. Wasn't even close. The Florida A&M Rattlers traveled to take on the 7th-ranked Bryant Bulldogs. I have predicted a Bulldog win, and they did 56-10. Our fifth game, Jacksonville traveled to take on SEC opponent Alabama a and I picked, predicted a Jacksonville win, and they did 73-14. Ryan Golden went down, Michael Hines came in, and absolutely lit up that Bulldog defense. I traveled to take on Cal Poly. I predicted the Mustangs would win, and they did 31-14. North Dakota State traveled to take on the 24th ranked Jackrabbits. I predicted the Jackrabbits would win, and they did 38-14. That was not even close. Bison offense was trash, and they did nothing. For, uh, one touchdown of theirs was from a backup quarterback. The other was a kick return for a touchdown by a non-subscriber player. The next game, Portland State traveled to Northern Colorado. I predicted a Bears win. I thought they would get it and secure bowl eligibility, but Portland State had other ideas. And they had another upset victory, this time against Northern Colorado. Our ninth game, number 22, Dayton traveled to take on Big Ten opponent Villanova. I predicted Dayton would win, and they did 49-21. They struggled a little bit to start the game, and then they exploded for like 28 straight points, I think it was. Our game of the week, New Hampshire traveled to number two, Savannah State, to take on the Tigers. And they almost pulled off a huge, monumental upset. But the Tigers would win it 51 44 that is it for our week 12 recap let's take a look at our week 13 predictions fellas game number one number seven ranked bryant bulldogs travel to take on southern i got bryant winning game number two uc davis at southern utah 
I have the Aggies winning that one. The Thunderbirds are on their backup quarterback. I don't really see them winning that game. UC Davis' defense is nasty. Game number three, Northern Colorado at Northern Arizona. I got the Bears securing a bowl game. Sam Houston State at North Dakota State in game four. I got the Bison winning that one to secure a bowl game as well. Our fifth game, number two ranked Savannah State Tigers travel to take on the South Carolina State Bulldogs. I got the Tigers winning that one and securing a trip to the ACC Championship. Uh, game number six, number one Fresno State traveling to take on the San Diego Toreros. And I do have the Bulldogs winning this one. I don't think the Toreros offense is going to match up well with them at all. Our next game, Jacksonville travels to take on the Prairie View A&M Panthers. And I've got Jacksonville winning that one. Next game after that, Southern Illinois Salukis travel to take on the 15th ranked Dayton Flyers. I got the Flyers winning that one easy. And our final game of week two, Columbia travels to take on the Cal Poly Mustangs. And I have the Mustangs. In that one, we're going to see some more of Eric Spears Jr. Not a lot of playing time, maybe just the second half. They up pretty good in the first half because we don't want him to transfer to another school in the offseason. But that is it for taking a look at the nation, guys. Our Week 12 recap and our Week 13 predictions. And I will be back with you guys in hopefully a couple weeks in mid-January, the latest, with some more videos. Hopefully. But it all depends on how everything goes here. But that's it for this video, guys. Hope to see you in the Discord. If you're new, if you're not new to the channel and you're not in the Discord, there's something you need to get in there. But that's it, guys.